Today is a very special day, and I woke up this morning, and the Lord just put it on my heart what we're doing today. We're coming to the house of the Lord. We're gathering together as his children to worship him. Amen. We're going to the communion table together. Let's get our take a moment right now, and let's get our hearts where they need to be. Take a moment. We're going to be silent. Let's go to our Lord. wanted to bring to your attention something that in two weeks, we on May 21st, we're going to have a celebration, a 25th wedding anniversary celebration for Pastor Rick and Christina here in the Fellowship Hall after church. So remember, two weeks, okay, on the 21st, that's where we're going to be. So bring cards, whatever type of gift you'd like to bring to them, you know, that's the time, okay? Please stand with us now as we're about to go to our Heavenly Father's throne and worship Him. Amen? Sunday. Let's see, we get okay. Y yesterday, my bride and I, you know, we attended a 
a uh, quinceanera. I'm sure most of you know what that is. If you, it's equivalent to like a sweet 16. And, you know, it was an honor when I was invited by this young girl. And she is from the, not this, you know, but from the Spanish ministry. So, you know, I help teach. Gabriel teaches also. So we were both invited to go and just be part of that. You know, and I was thinking how easy would have been for us to just say no. And we would have missed out on watching this young girl's beautiful face just light up when, you know, sees her family and everyone there to support her. And I think about when we are invited, we think about, hey, you know what? I, I don't know if I could make it. I'll go next year. They'll have another birthday. There'll be another anniversary. Maybe they just inviting me to give them a present. I don't know. <laughs> and I don't want to go. But either case, you're going to go next year? God doesn't promise you tomorrow, so when you get that invitation, someone's asking you to be there. You don't show up. You're saying, I'm either too busy, you're not that important. I don't know. All I know is that I'm just thankful that we said yes. Years back, I was at a, I used to work with this young guy, and uh, he said to me, yeah, I'm getting married this weekend. And I said, okay. So he invited us. <laughs> I didn't go. I couldn't say i go to his next wedding, but I didn't go. Monday, week or so later, after he comes back, he says to me, he goes, where were you? I missed you. He goes, we, I, I, I had your table right there in front of us, right close to us, and, and it had your name on it. He goes, and you didn't show up. So I had to give your seat to someone else. You know, every Sunday, you hear Pastor Rick give an invitation. And, you know, when he says with your heads bowed, no one looking around. We hear, and he says, well, by the looks of it, everyone in here apparently are saved because nobody's raising their hand. Well, only you know that. If you're not saved and you didn't raise your hand, you know that. Pastor Rick is the only one that knows that. Because he's the one looking around at those hands so he can pray for you. So, and I think today you're going to get the same invitation from Pastor Dave. Because that's what it's about. So, if you get an invitation today. And you choose to wait. Because you think you have tomorrow. I think twice about that. Okay, I think very, very hard about that. Because our tomorrow, again, it's not promised. So give that some thought before you say no or before you don't answer that invitation. Okay? Now, as the deacons pass the bread, I want you guys to think about this okay whatever's in your heart whatever's in your mind clear it out and understand that this invitation that you're receiving to take communion is something you got to do with the clear conscience okay so examine yourself that's what the word says
the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, when darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me. In the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He gave them that invitation that day to do this in remembrance of him. What are you remembering today about him? What he did on that cross? Or all the things that he does every single day for us? That's what we celebrate. You may take the bread.
And the same night, he took the cup and he said, this is a new covenant. Represents his blood. This cup right here. I know that when we look at it as juice, but when we take it, we are proclaiming his blood. Amen. We are saying we believe that that blood was shed for us. You believe this today? You may take the moment. May pass your cuff to the center aisles, please. way from 
Praise the Lord. Huh? If you look up on the screen there, you'll see a number where you can tie your, you know, send your gifts and offerings. So if you can do that right now with your phone, that's okay. You can take time to do that, but please remember to turn your phone off after that. We don't want it going off during service. So we thank you for that. So if you need to do that now, go ahead. Or you can put it in the agape box back there. That, Or you could walk it into the front office. Whichever one works for you, whatever God puts in your heart, that's all we ask. So let's pray. Father, we're just uh, so grateful this morning, Lord, for your goodness for your love and grace, for your provisions that we receive from you every single day, Lord. Right now, Lord, we have the opportunity to to praise you and worship you. And part of that, Lord, is, you know, the way we give to you, Father. We know, Lord, each and every one of us in this place know you do not need this money. You do not need those things from us. You didn't come to take our place on the cross to get something back from us. You did it because you love us. And this is a way of us showing and returning that, Lord. So that these funds could be used to expand your glory, your kingdom here on this earth, Father. That people would see and recognize, Lord, why these things are happening. Why these things take place, Father. Why we do what we do, Lord. I know many people, you know, say, you know, Christians, there's Christians that, but, you know, there's a song that we hear often that says, you know, we would know we are Christians by our love. So if there's any addictions we need to get rid of, or an addiction we need to pick on, or one we need to apply to our lives, hopefully is love. Let it move in our hearts so much, Lord, that people would just want to know more about you because what they see coming out of your children's hearts. The witness, Lord, that we proclaim, the walks of life of every individual, of every believer, Father, Let's people know who you are. So help us all in this place today, Father, that when we walk out of this place, Lord, we would know that what we gave to you today, Lord, it was not for any benefit or return that we are expecting back, but that it is to be used, Father, for your kingdom. This place here, where we are right now, we're, it's safe. Lights, this microphone, this stage, everything that takes place in this building, Father, that you provided for us. We give you glory for providing all these things, Lord. You know, one time my wife and I, we sat down and, you know, figuring out bills, things like that. And and I told her, you know, we don't bring in enough money to pay for everything we're doing. But yet we still get to go out and, and do all these things and the bills get paid. And I said, we're not doing this anymore. We're just going to continue to trust you, Lord. And that's what this church has done in the last 18 or so years, Father. We have put our trust in you and you sustain this place, Father. So we're in that crossroads again, not worrying about it, but seeking your guidance and asking that you would show us, Father, the place where you're going to have us to go. Because we know we're not going to be orphans out in the street, and you, you, you wouldn't do that to us, Father. So help us, Lord, to continue to just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father. And thank you ahead of time for what you're going to be doing, Lord. 
I thank you for all the saints in this room here, Lord. That they are here to worship you, Father. And to thank you for what you're doing in each and every one of our lives, Father. Again, Father, we love you and we thank you. And just ask, Father, that you would just take over this place. Pastor Dave comes up today, Lord. And just speak your word. And we always know, Father, the way you speak through him, Father. We ask that you will continue to do that today. So we thank you, Lord, in your precious holy name we ask. Amen. falls it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory All right, church. Good morning. Good morning. 
Anybody in here seen a victory? Amen. 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 We, um, first of all, thank you all for coming. Hope everything's going semi-good. You, are, you're in here? You're saved? Right? Okay. Like Brother Renee said, before we really even have to get into where we're going, the most important thing today about today is, as he was speaking, is salvation. It's about knowing who Jesus is in your life. Johnny, how you doing? Good to see you. It's about having Jesus in your life personally. Yes. No doubts. Knowing that Christ is your Lord and Savior. Yes. So before we have to wait to the end or get to where we're going, my question is, if you are in this place right now and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can't pick a time and a place, please, Please. It's not going to be ashamed of. It's not, as a matter of fact, it's the best place to be in your life because now you can say, I want to know who he is. I was 43 years old when I got saved. <laughs> That's old to get saved. Because by that time, you're so entrenched in what you really think it is and you've got everything figured out. And I made it 43 years without Jesus. The biggest mistake in my life said that I could have gone 43 years and one more day without him. Because like Brother Renee said today, the invitation stands for eternity. That doesn't mean I stand for eternity. Scripture says my days are numbered, friends. He gave me today, but tomorrow is not promised. Amen. It is not promised. So if you're here today, please, and if you don't know, I'm not going to go any, uh, we're not going to go any farther because the message is important, but not as important as someone having their sins forgiven. If you're in here today and that's not the case in your life, if it isn't the case in your life, please, I'm asking, if you don't know Jesus, just go like this, wave to me, and we'll take care of business. It only would take a minute. Everyone in this house knows Jesus personally. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's what we're talking about, praising the Lord. Oh, it's this side. We're going to be looking at Psalm 66. Psalm 66. And I always, I always get in trouble because I, I have 47 verses everybody has to follow. <laughs> right? And by the time we get through two Everybody's confused and goes, what did Pastor Dave say? So today there's only two verses. Oh. Oh. Wileen goes, that's nice. Only two. <laughs> We're Proverbs 17, 3. And these are the only two we're going to go to, and they're close, but it's going to be later. Okay? Psalm 17, or I'm sorry, Proverbs 17, 3 and Proverbs 25, 4. Proverbs 17, 3, and Proverbs 25, 4. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Everybody in this, in your house today, Lord, has seen a victory. Not just in the natural, but in the supernatural. Every hand and every person here says they know who you are personally, Lord. And that is the greatest victory. So we thank you, Lord. And we're going to see in this psalm, we don't know who the author is. We don't know what the situation was. All we know for sure is it came after the parting of the Red Sea and dry land at the Jordan River. It came after that. So what we're going to see is a psalm of praise. A psalm of praise. So I don't, you know, I don't know what kind of denomination, what you came out of and all that stuff. But we're going to get a praise on today. Amen. We are going to get a praise on today. Not just for today, but for tomorrow when we leave this place. Just thank you, Jesus, that your praise goes with us and our praise goes to you. And we ask it all in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, we get, we, we're going to sing a psalm of praise right now. 
right? But it seems like every time we come here, we get a song of praise, we get in our car, first thing we put on is talk radio. Dirt, praise right down to, right in the tank, right? Because they don't mix. Talk radio and praise don't go together. God brings, God brings praise and hope. Talk radio gives you nothing but what? Only the news as we know it. You, you show me a joyful talk radio station. Okay? Now, the thing about it is, okay, so when I, when I preach or when I come to Jesus, there's, there's the hard stuff, but there's, joy, there's an understanding if there's joy in the hard stuff. Why? Because Jesus is with us in the hard stuff. Okay? They go, wow, Dave, you must be like some kind of Pollyanna guy. No, I'm Italian. There are no Pollyanna <laughs> Italian people. Are you, it, every, anybody understanding that? Italian people, if you walk out in the sunshine and you bring an umbrella, are you, you hear what I'm saying? Italian people are, they don't, oh, roses and daisies and cupcakes. If you feel like that and you're Italian, you ain't a real Italian. Serious. So the only way we can get a praise on, if there's only way that we get a new heart, and the only way we can look at things through different eyes is, Rocco, am I kidding? Yeah. <laughs> is it has to be by the God who we serve and the might and power of who he is, not sometimes, but all the time. Amen. Amen? So everybody at Psalm 66. Okay? Psalm 66. What's that? Amen. So the only two verses we're going to look at are Proverbs 17, 3, 25, 4, but we are in Psalm 66. Amen? Amen. Now, it says, make a joyful shout to God all the earth. All the earth leaves nobody out. All the earth. Whether you understand him, or would you believe in him, whether you think he exists, the earth, if we didn't exist, do you understand? If the earth existed without us, the earth would still be praising the Lord. Okay? The creation, right now, Romans says, the creation is groaning to be redeemed. It knows that it fell in Genesis. It, the creation itself is waiting to redeem back to what it was when God puts everything the way it should be, okay? So look, we're going to look at the first four verses, and if you want to jot it down, the verses 1 to 4 talk about God's growing glory, all right? We glorify God now, but there's a time coming when he returns that the glory will be complete. The glory were absolutely complete. So look at verses 1 to 4. Make a joyful shout to God all the earth. And it means that shout means a sound or a blast. When they sing and when we praise, it's supposed to be a blast till God. Not praise. We should be blasting the praises that we have to the heart of God. Amen. Rocco, right? The praise team. It's supposed to be a blast. Why do you think they had the shofars and all of it wasn't just beep, 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 beep. They would take the horns, right, Myron, and they would blast the shofar to announce what? That the kings are coming. There was something ready to be said. That's how we praise them, with a blast. Amen. Any blasters in here? Right here. Ah! <laughs> it's, see, it's like we get in here and we get a... Well, it, here's what it, I'm in church now. <laughs> this is the most liberating place on earth you will ever be, yeah. is in his house. Yes. Yes. If you can't shout and jump and get something going on in here, you're sure in the heck not going to get it on out there. Bring it. Come on, <laughs> Rocco. Right. Amen. Somebody. What are you doing? I ain't afraid. <laughs> I'll just, <No>. Come on. <laughs> oh, my. Amen. For you newcomers, th this is just how I am. So, 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. So look, verse 2. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. If that language is reversed. It's glorify the praise. Do you understand when we sing the praise team, when we sing, we are bringing, we are magnifying the glory back to our God. It needs to be glorious. When we sit here, what time is it? Oh, okay, we're doing all right. When, when we sit in here and we understand the pit that we've all been brought out of, you all understand we all came out of a pit. Yes. Amen? Yes. Anybody in here not come out of a pit when they got saved? Okay, praise God. So when we understand where and what he's brought us out of, what else can we do except make a blast from our mouth about the goodness of our God? How often is God good? <laughs> that was a trick question. So look, how awesome are your works through the greatness of your power? Is, is there a small act of God? No. No. There is, there's, the only works that our God have are mighty. Mighty to creation, mighty for tearing down every stronghold that whatever enemy we have might think that they keep us in bondage. There is nothing that keeps us in bondage except that cross. When Christ died on that cross, he died on that to forgive our sins, right? And do what? Break every stronghold, break everything that the enemy has that comes against us, would want to come against us, or will ever come against us. What victory was not won at the cross? Somebody. Everything. Every victory was secured when Christ died, was buried, and rose again from the grave. He defeated everything in that three days. And nowhere since that happened 2,000 years ago has anything ever changed. <laughs> right, Susie? That should go like this. Hey, right. There should be a bunch of thumbs up. Because it's each and every one of us that that power, that forgiveness, that chain-breaking liberation has been given. Amen. Born again. Through the greatness of his power. We are powerless, friends. We are absolutely powerless to do the things that God has us to do. Absolutely powerless. The faster I come to the relationship or the understanding that I have no power, the more power that I can receive from God. Right? If my tank is full and I go to gas station, there ain't no room to put anything in it. But when, when you go past the empty and that little light comes on or the gas thing and you know, okay, I'm, kinda, I'm pushing this now, that's when you get in there, then it's however many tanks, 12 gallons, 25 gallons, whatever it is, full. That's how Christ wants to be in my life. Why do I want to run my tank of faith and power and grace to empty? It's a dangerous place to be. Why don't I just, be, and it's absolutely power, you know, run on full. Okay, Lord, just woke up, fill the tank. Fill the tank. You ever get around noontime and you need a sandwich? All right. A little, need some grace. Lord needs, okay. And he's there. Why do I keep trying to push on through all of these things on my own? When I have a helper, what did God say? I'm going to send a helper back. Who's the helper? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Run a little empty here. Oh, no, I can do it. I don't Pretty soon, the thing's overheating, the car, me, things are, you know, gaskets are blowing. You know, I'm, you're trying to talk to somebody. Next thing you know, in the conversations, you've gotten a yelling match. What does that mean? It means the grace tank. I've let all of the things go too far before saying, Holy Spirit, please. Verse 4, all the earth shall worship you. And sing your praises. They shall sing 
praises to your name. Is that happening now? No. But Scripture says what? There's a time coming when what? Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are the Christ that God says you are. That's why it's called the growing, a growing. Okay? We're talking about a growing glory. Now, what we have to understand is, you see in the, right there in the middle of verse 3 where it says, your enemies shall submit themselves to you? Right in the middle of verse 3. Okay, got it? That word submit means to cringe. It's a feigned submission. So all of these entities in the world that are, oh, yeah, I believe in God. Remember after 9-11, every politician, both sides of the aisle, were on the steps of the Capitol building talking about God. We need God's help. Everybody was there. Who do you see on the Capitol steps today? Nobody. Nobody. And when you see politicians, I don't care what side of the aisle, and they're talking about God can do this and God will do that. I believe that God. And then that same person will go in and say it's okay to abort babies. That same person, yes, God. And they'll take the genitals off of young people. Or it's yes, God, this, and yes, God, that. What they're saying is inside they're using the word God, but their guts are twisted. Everything in them is being twisted when they say that name. They haven't submitted to God. They're using a a name, but it almost makes them paralyzed to be able to say, "Uh, God. They haven't submitted to God. It's a false submission. And I have to admit, sometimes my submission to God on a scale of 1 to 10, depending on what day it is, I may barely move the needle. And maybe that's true for some of us in here. You know, where, my question is, where's my submission needle? Where's your submission needle? We get saved, hallelujah. But that saving, salvation, and submission are two different things, friends. Amen? All right. Now we're going to look at verse 5 to 7. Verse 5 to 7 speaks about our God's forever faithfulness. Our God's forever faithfulness. We sing it, and we have to believe it. God's forever faithful, right? Amen? Amen. Okay. And then we get a couple blocks down the road. I don't know about this faithfulness stuff. But he is. He is. Look. Now, verse 5. Starts out, come and see the works of God. Come and see. It was interesting. As soon as I read that verse, come and see, I thought of Amy sitting over there. Raise your hand, Amy. That's Amy. She's, she drags more people in this church. Her and Ron, it's like, hey, let me drag you. And all we're saying when we do that is come and see. Because the, all the conversations are what? Well, what's God doing? Or what can God do? Or what? All we have to, like Amy said, that's my new tagline. If people ask her, she's going to say, come and see. It's very simple. In the first chapter of John, when Jesus was walking with John the Baptist's disciples, and a couple of disciples asked Jesus, what? Where are you staying? What did Jesus say? Come and see. Mm -hmm. That was it. Come and see. We can can tell people and go try to explain it, but come and see. Come and see. Amen? Amen. I'll tell you what. My my brother Brian over here. It was, you don't mind, do you? There was a time, you try to walk up to Brian and talk, it was like, <laughs> it was like, what the hell are you walking up to me for? <laughs> now, no, it's true or, true or not. Yeah, hey, hallelujah, that's okay. It, it's, it's life. Come on, bro. So now look at him. Smile. <laughs> that's, that's what believing that God can do in the abundance of his grace. Amen. Amen. It was, oh, I talked to him and he goes, nah, that's nice. <laughs> now it's like, <laughs> now you sit down and talk to the man and the, and the blessings just come from off of him onto us, onto me. 
Amen. So if you have somebody who wants to come do something, just say, come and see. What's God doing? Come and see. Really simple. They'll, they'll come or they won't. But if they come, then they'll be able to see what God's doing. So come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing towards the sons of men. Who are the sons of men? Us. Now, he, he, he was working in Israel, but what was being done in Israel was supposed to spread throughout to the nations round about. So they, that's what God called the Israelites out for. So they could see the nations round about. You don't have to worship 20 different gods and do all of these different things. There's the one true God who is the only God who can bring your crops, can bring the rain, can bring you protection, can bring you peace, grace, and all of these things. You live a certain way. Obey the things I'm asking you to do. You will prosper in the nations. You are supposed to be a witness to the nations. What are we supposed to be? Hopefully for me, I can be a witness to my neighbor or someone that I can show this, this incredible mercy and grace that God has shown. And not just that, friends, but the victories. Oh, my goodness. Now, look. So he says, how awesome is his doing for the sons of man? He turned the sea into dry land. When is that? That's the, right? That's the Red Sea, okay? And then he had brought you through the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him on dry land. Look. The Red Sea is in front of us. The Red Sea was in front of the Israelites. The Jordan River was there running at flood stage. But did they, we were talking about this last night. When they crossed, did they hear this when they walked? Why? They dry, go ahead, Sue, why? They walked on dry land. This was a sea. This was the Red Sea. You think when the waters parted, there wasn't going to be any mud? No. The river, Jordan, was running at flood stage. It was walled up on 20 miles of dry land. And it said when the waters came, they, the waters, you got a river that's still flowing, but the water went up. It said the water walled up. Well, what about gravity? Good question. Who obeys gravity? God. <laughs> but we... See, we hear these things and we go, oh, no, you mean, everybody in here believes in Joshua's long day, right? Yeah? Well, you mean God could have, like, slowed the planets and then rebel, God could, uh, yeah. <laughs> what is impossible for our God? Nothing. Nothing. So if he needed, if Joshua he looked up and said, God, I need a long day. And if that meant the sun stood still, the rotation of the earth stopped, or whatever it took to do that, God can do that. Why? He made it. Because he's God. Yeah. Okay. That. Why, Wileen? Because he's God. Because he's God. This whole premise is because he is God. That's what we're rejoicing in today. That's where the jump on our plane and the victories come from. I'm going to see my victory. We just sang it. I'm going to see your victory. The only victories I have are his victories. Amen. That's it. That's the, right. There's no trophies in my case that say, look what Dave's done. <laughs> there ain't. That'd be a little trophy. That'd be like, a, and it would be small and still be empty. Because all the victories, all the things that change in my life, all the things that took me from the pit I was in to the place where I'm at now, all goes to God. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. The only thing I did was wreck everything that I touched. Anybody else in here like that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. We look like a, like a bunch of penguins. <laughs> hey, okay. I know some of us are getting too old. It doesn't go up as easy, but amen. <laughs> so here's what we do. So we, we see the things that he has done for us. He's 
rules, look, verse 7, he rules by his power forever. His eyes observe the nations. Do not let the rebellious exalt themselves. What, what, when you turn on the TV, radio, what are all the nations doing today? They are exalting themselves. All of them. And what are, they're all heading to a big crap hole. They're all running their countries that were once beautiful places and wonderful people into the ground. They're throwing their own people in prisons. They're assassins. They're just doing all the to their own people. And then they get on his microphone. Everything's great in the Ukraine. Everything's great in Rwanda. Everything's, oh, we're just doing wonderful here. Your people are eating mud cookies for God's sake. And you're going to tell us how good everything is. Like Sandy, read Voice of the Martyrs, the Martyrs and see how wonderful everything is in the world. But they're going to get out there and say, oh, no, we're good. No. And it's not getting better, it's getting worse. But the thing, the thing for us, Sandy and I were talking about this. You know, he rules by his power, and he's turned the seas to dry land. Come and see the works of God. We need to, we need to find a new building, right? We all know that we're, we're moving. There's all of these things happening. That's just part and parcel of all the things that life has, okay? But the thing that we were sitting, just the two of us talking, and I said, and I, for me, this is what the Lord showed me. Sometimes I get so fixated, right, on the on the destination of something. I get so fixated on the end that I forget to see the works of what he's doing to get us there. Yes, yes. The process, the destination is going to be what God wants it to be. But why am I missing what he's doing for all of us in the process of getting there? I want to know the destination. I want to know the end game. Don't you want to know what God's doing to get you there? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want the middle part. I just want to know what's happening. I want the end. And he was talking to me. No, I, I want to be able to enjoy you getting me there. It might not all be enjoyable what's in the process. But even in the unenjoyable, you're in it with us to get us through us. We need a new home. So what do we do? Give ourselves ulcers till we get it? Lose sleep? That's what I'm saying. God, if we sing what we sing, believe what we sing, believe what we pray, believe what his word says, what are we supposed to be? Friday night I did an up, a little teaching on the upper room. All the disciples were in a room, windows locked, doors locked because of fear of the Jews. That's why the, it was Sunday night. They knew he was risen from the dead, but they're still locked in this fear in this room because of the Jews. Because all the Jews could do is, if you claim Christ, throw you out of the synagogue. Okay. But that was their social life. That was their religious life. That was their economic life. Everything banked on being be able to go to the synagogue. But when he came through the wall... He didn't go, I believe that you guys are right. We all, I, let me sit down and pull up a chair and worry with you. <laughs> he came through the wall, looked at them in their fear, and the first thing out of his mouth was, peace be to you. In the turmoil of those three days, in the turmoils of those three years, he looked at them and said, peace be with you. So if he came through that wall, and it did. There's no break in that verse. He came through the wall, stood in their midst, and that's what he told them. So what would Jesus, what would we do if Jesus came through the wall, stood right here, I just, I'd get out of the way, just like this. And he said to all of us, and he looked over this congregation and said, peace be to you. Do you think it would change from, the message would change from 2,000 years ago? No. No. You expect me to have peace in the time we live in? Don't ask, I don't expect nothing. Jesus does, though. <laughs> i got to work on my own peace. Right? Renee, we're going, uh, 
anybody of us in here. We probably won't get three blocks. Somebody pull in front of us, we don't make the light. We're flipping out. Tammy's going, yeah. We're going, yeah. We shake our heads because it's true. We shake our heads because everything we're speaking about is pertinent to all of us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So if we're in this thing, try to enjoy the journey. Try to enjoy the process. Please. Yeah, that's all Jesus is saying. We might even like see some like wonderful things on the way. What was it? Not yesterday, the day before. Sandy and I, we were driving all over the place. But the sky was so blue and the clouds were so white. They look like big, and I'm, I'm, we're driving, I, every, I, I don't even know how many, look at the sky today, look at the clouds. And she's looking at me like, mm -hmm. and, but it was all right. And then last, the other night, this full moon, and had like those black clouds, and it looked like fingers, and the moon was just, it was amazing. It was amazing. But I could have just said, yeah, well, that's another night. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Busy day, I'm tired, I want to go home, have a cup of coffee, and just go to sleep. Which would, that's what we do most of the time. But it was so magnificent that you couldn't miss it. But there was a lot of times when I did. But I didn't miss those. Amen. So, okay, now we're going to go to verse 8. 8 through verse 12. Which is really important because this one is called, it's about his persistent protection. Persistent protection. And you know that's what we have, right? We are persistently protected yes. by God. Thank yes. Thank you, Eileen. It says, oh, bless our God, you peoples, and make a voice of his praise be heard. Right? When God's doing wonderful things for us, the only people who are going to hear, even amongst ourselves, is when we give voice, when we give something, a shout, a blast of his praise. Yes. Yes. Amen. amen. I know there was an amen over here. Yes. Amen. There needs to be a voice, a blast, a sound because of his faithfulness, amen. because of his protection to us. Sometimes I get so comfortable, like, well, I'm a Christian, and I love Jesus, and I deserve it. What I have to understand is what he has for me, he's giving me out of the loving kindness of his heart. Amen? Amen? Now, if, if, I want to, if I want to be the fool, do I think I'm going to get the same protection and the same results if I'm out there? No. He will say, okay, Dave, you want to go back to driving your car? You want to go back to that same thing? Well, you know, go ahead. But I'm going to pull the insurance card. And then when I come back to myself and I ask for forgiveness about whatever I went back to, he goes, okay, let's go. He doesn't leave me. He just leaves me to my own. <laughs> you see the difference? God is always there. He will always be there. But he will allow me to act and deserve and get what I deserve from how I'm acting. Is somebody writing that down? <laughs> I can say, well, I'm Pastor Dave, and I can do this, and I can do that, and God's go he, he'll continue to love me, but that doesn't mean he ain't going to put some potholes in the road to get my attention. That got quiet, but that's okay. It's okay. Verse 9, he keeps our soul among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved. It means to slip. Verse 10, for you, O God, have tested us and you have refined us as silver is refined. Now, that's where we're going to look real quick, okay? Turn to Proverbs, just go some pages back and we're going to go to Proverbs. First one is 17.3. Proverbs 17.3. Amen? Amen? Proverbs 17.3. Now we just read that 
you have tested us and refined us as silver is refined. Are, are tests bad? What do tests do? They prove what you learned. <laughs> what, right? I take a math test to find out if I learned any math. Took a, took a geography test to know if I know where America was. If you don't take a test, the teacher won't know, and you won't know what you've retained or what you haven't. The teacher gives you a test to find out where the need is. Amen? Okay? Sometimes we didn't, none of us really, I mean, you, some of you guys might have, oh, I like tests. I like when it was tests. No. But the test was for my own good. A test was for our own goods to find out, right? The teachers are here. The teacher got to give a test to find out what student had a knowledge of what he needed to have and where more work had to be done. Right, Jim? So look what it says. In 17.3, the refining pot is for silver and the furnace is for gold. But the Lord tests our hearts. So the things that are going to be tested and we are going to be tested in will be like that refining fire. Right? We need something to heat up to bring all the things that aren't godly in me or in us out. And that's that firing pot. But who's doing the testing? God. Again, everything that happens in my life or doesn't go the way I want isn't the enemy. Are you understanding? Right? It says here that the Lord is testing my heart. Okay? Go back. Then you go to verse 25, 4. And here's the reason. Here's why. Okay? Proverbs 25, 4. If you take away the dross from the silver... The dross is always the impurities. And the impurities are not removed until the heat rises. The hotter it gets, the more impurities I see that I have. Right? Okay. I will go, and what comes out? It, everything that has been refined, all the impurities that will be taken out, will go to the silversmith for jewelry. So... Everything that comes out of that firing pot, all the old impurities that are drawn out, the silver or gold that's left, that goes to the silversmith. Who's the silversmith? God. And those things that have had the dross removed are brought to God so that he can do something with it. So he can mold us and make us into the things he wants us to be. But we don't get to the things in the way he wants us to be unless we go through the fire Amen. sometimes. Okay? So there's a purpose. There's a purpose for the fire and the heat that we go through. Verse 11, and you brought us into the net. It would seem like, well, you brought us away from the net. You wouldn't lead us to where the net is. But it says, you brought us into the net, and you laid on our affliction on our backs, and you have caused men to ride over us, whether these are men in chariots, the enemies, people coming against us, right? We went through the fire and through the water. We were talking about this last night. Through the fire means the heat was so bad, we don't know if we can take it anymore. And if you're rounding, you've always got that last gulp. It's, I'm not coming back up from this one. Right? That's where this man had been. But look what he says in, at the end. But you brought us out to rich fulfillment. We go through the fire, we go through the floods, and he brings us out into an abundant place. Imagine if everything was easy. If everything was that easy, would I appreciate when I got to the end and I got to see the abundance? I would, I'm taking a lot of things for granted anyway. If there was no work in it, if there was nothing that had to be done on my part, why do it? There would be no thankfulness. What would there be to be thankful for? It's all easy. I just, there it is, okay. No. 
the things that I've worked hardest for, the things that we've all worked hardest for, are the things that we appreciate the most. Right? When you're a teenager, you get your first car, you're waxing that thing, you're checking the oils, you go down to get or buy to the record shop, you're going to check the oil before you go home, you're, all of that stuff. Why? Because it took something to get it. Right? And you know what it took to get us to where we are? The cross. That's, it took that. It took that cross, that sacrifice to get us here. That's why we praise him. Verse 13 to 15. Verse 13 to 15 is a fulfilled promise. Now, we just went through a fast, right? And this gentleman made a vow. Are fast and vows mandatory? No. No. Okay. We have to. A vow was volitional. If I'm in such a dire strait or something's happening in my life, I vow to do this, Lord. Now, the problem with a vow is if you make it, you better keep it. Okay? You better keep it. So, what he did was, and he made a vow, but look what it says how he did it. Verse 14 which my lips uttered and my mouth spoken when I was in trouble. Be careful of vows and promises you make when you're in it deep. <laughs> right? Here's what I'll do, Lord. This, uh, 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 I'll never do uh, If you let me get out of it. Uh, and then pretty soon it's like you forgot what you told them. You promised so many things that you can't remember what you promised. Be careful what we promise when we're in trouble. Get with the Lord, see what he has to say, talk to him and just say, Lord, whatever I can do, whatever you need done, take care. But you start promising all these things, once you promise it to God, he's expecting it. Yes, <laughs> yes, he does. So, so after, obviously, in verse 15, everything went well. He says, I will offer you my burnt offerings, the fat of the animals with sweet aromas. They would put incense on the offering, and I will offer the bulls and goats. So this man made a vow, and he did what? Kept it. Amen. Okay, we're, we're going to finish up verses 16 to 20. 16 to 20. It says, let his goodness and mercy be known. Let his goodness and mercy be known. That's like Amy or anybody, when we talk about people, it's like, Come and see, but also come and hear. You come here to hear about the goodness and the mercies of God. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. One, take a minute. Everyone in here, take a minute and just to yourselves, thank God. And say, look and think back about the things, or a thing, a major thing, that he has done for your soul. Because he has done that to everyone in here. Just, just take a minute and say, thank you, Lord, for doing this, for keeping my soul alive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for what you have done for my soul. Verse 17, I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. Extolled means to be praised. It just means to lift up all the things he has done. Verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. If I hold anything in my heart that's against someone, against something, any, my own pride, my own whatever it is, if I hold those things in my heart, don't expect God to hear. If I can get rid of them and say, sorry, Lord, guess what? That opens that channel again between me and Jesus. Verse 19, but certainly God has heard me and has attended 
again, to the voice of my prayer. He hears the prayers. When we pray, the one thing we can be certain of is that he hears them. That he hears them. My mistake is I'm, I am certainly believing that everything I've ever prayed for or will pray for, I'm going to get. My certainty is that he has heard every prayer. Now, does he have an answer for every prayer I've prayed? Yes. Yes, he does. There is an answer for every prayer I've prayed. It might be yes. It might be no. It might be now. It might be later. It might not be. But there has and is an answer to every prayer we will ever pray. I just have the answer I want to get. I just have what answer I'm looking for. But he does answer and hear every prayer. Amen. Amen. So we don't pray in vain. We don't ask in vain. We don't hope in vain. Nothing that we do and bring to the Lord is ever in vain. Never, ever is it in vain. Now we're, we're just going to close in verse 20. <laughs> What's it say? Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Anybody got, a, anybody got a shout, a clap, a stand up, whatever you want to do to God today to let him know that I am, seriously, bless you, God. Come on. How about on this side? Any, anybody got a blessing for God today? You're here. You woke up. The head came off the pillow. Your car started. Whatever, something. I had bacon and eggs. I, whatever it is. Yeah, hey. Amen. Greatest gift of all. Yes. Yes. Feeling at peace. Thank you, Bob. There is no greater gift than the peace of God on any of our lives. Think about it. It's nothing but turmoil. All we hear, money's going away, food's going away, no more cows, the goats are going to be, I don't know, raptured before we are. I don't know what... You know, every car is going to be run on uh, lithium and shaving cream. I don't know what. It's all, every time you hear it, it's some other bizarre thing. Everything. Everything. Except what? Blessed be our God. If all those other things happen, what do you think? God's on vacation? God doesn't know where we're at or what we need? <laughs> Amen. My question to myself, or maybe everybody, what does God being God mean to you? What does it mean to me? Everything. Is he going to do and able to do everything that scripture says? Amen. And more. This is just what he's given us. The end of the Gospel of John says if everything that he said and everything he did was written in the volumes of the books, the earth could not contain them. And he was only here for three years. <laughs> and he's been from eternity to eternity. I think you're a Pollyanna, Dave. I think you're just one of them. I don't know what one of them is, but if it's believing every word that's in the word of God, I'm a one of them. I'm a one of them. Because if I ain't, I'm wasting my time. I might as well go back to what I was doing. Hallelujah. If he ain't who he is, says he's going to do what he's going to do, why am I here? Why are we here? Warm a chair? I don't think so. We're here, like the psalmist says, and like our praise team said, we are here to blast the praises of our God. Anybody got a blast? We got another song, right, at the end? Okay. They got, you guys are going to blast, right? You're going to be like different than when you came the first, yeah? Yeah, okay. Over there in the booth, you got blast mode on? Yeah? Okay. Because what we're... Oh! Ha! <laughs>
<laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's what a blast from God will do. God, what the heck? <laughs> I don't know if that was on purpose. I love it. That was so cool. That's what God's waiting to do. Whoa, ho. That was God. Oh, that was. That was. Liz, Rochelle's going, oh my. Liz is like, oh my God. <laughs> she said, Jeremiah's going, yeah. That's what. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That's when you come to. That's when you come to Orange Coast. It's like, you, everybody knows your name, right? And so, hey, Jeremiah, Rochelle's like, hey, yeah. Liz is still like this. She's still holding up. <laughs> she oh, that was wonderful. And that was here. Can you imagine when that trump sounds? The sounds of what, oh, I, that, <laughs> there's, <laughs> Michael. Whatever you pushed, whoever pushed it, amen. <laughs> Blessed be God who has not turned away any of my prayers, nor his mercy ever from me. Amen. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna, that was a blast. They're going to blast. You're going to blast. We're going to blast. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for the truths of who you are. We thank you that all you want from us is praise. Why? Because all you want from us is to remember the greatness of your works in all of our lives. You have brought our hearts and spirits and souls that were dead, dead in our trespasses and sins and made us alive with you, Christ, in the resurrection of our newness. So all God's people said, with a blast. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Check, 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 check. Thank you, Dave. We appreciate it very much. You know, a week ago, we were talking to introducing everybody to your worship team, and I was negligent, and I neglected to mention the individual that handles and oversees our live stream and our YouTube, and he makes all of this come out there into the world, and that's Brandon McCowan. Let's give him a hand. So let's bring it. Come on, stand on your feet, and let's go. While we're waiting, oh, here we go. while we're waiting, there's one song I want to sing real quick, and this is for our dear friend Mary. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.